Welcome to Better System Trader, the podcast to help systematic traders of all levels improve their trading. We'll give you loads of expert tips and practical advice on system design and validation, money management, trading psychology, and many other topics. Whether you're just starting out or a savvy systematic trader, we're here to help you improve your trading and find more success. This is Better System Trader with your host, Andrew Swanscott. Hi there, welcome to Better System Trader. Glad you could join us today for this week's trading thought. Now, as you're probably aware, we're currently focusing on mean reversion trading strategies. In the previous episode, which is episode 127, and the first part in the mean reversion series, Cesar Alvarez shared a number of techniques to measuring mean reversion. I'm not sure of the exact number of techniques actually, but uh, there was probably around close to 10, maybe 12 different ideas that he shared with us. And there are a lot of ways to measure mean reversion when looking for trade setup. So if you haven't heard that episode yet, you should go back and take a listen to that before or maybe after hearing this one. Anyway, in this week's trading thought, I want to add a little bit more to the insights that Cesar shared with us. And to do that, I'm going to reference another very popular mean reversion episode that I had. And that was with PJ Sutherland. It was episode number 62, which was released back in November 2016, so almost a year ago now. And in this little bit of audio that I'm about to share with you, PJ is talking about measuring mean reversion as well. And he discusses a technique that Cesar also shared. And it's uh, really interesting to hear PJ talk about this technique. In fact, PJ says it's where he really started to see phenomenal test results. And who doesn't want that, right? So what is this technique? Where did PJ see these phenomenal test results? Well, let's head on over to PJ now and have a listen as he explains it to us. Yes, I think those higher win rates are definitely one of the uh, main appeals of mean reversion. But what do you think actually drives that? Like, what are the key drivers of short-term returns specific to mean reversion? So one of the one of the key criteria, in in my view, uh, is in fact the magnitude of the price change in the short term, and you can measure that in a number of ways. But one way that I measure that is quite simply with the rate of change and. The optimal parameter that I found works really the, really well there is just across four days, but anything from one to 10 days, even 20 days would work. Um, so over a four-day period, relatively short period of time, uh, we're looking to measure how far a stock has moved from its close four days ago. And if we're looking too long, for instance, if a stock had lost 5% in four days, uh, you know that's a pretty steep sell-off, but it's not nearly as steep as a stock that has lost 20% in, in four days. And stock that lost 20% is much more likely um, to reverse. And so it's the magnitude, in my view, that determines A, the success of the mean reversion trade, and B, the likely payoff. Now, the difficulty, of course, with rate of change is that it's unbounded. And so stocks that are super volatile uh, would have very different rate of change readings over a four-day period relative to one um, that's not as volatile. And then also a price series compared to itself would vary um, when trading in a bear market, we'd have rate of change values, of course, because of a higher volatility, they'd be a lot more extreme as opposed to um, bull markets. And so one thing we need to do um, is attempt to normalize the, the rate of change. So we get a reading that is precisely the same or means the same to us in any environment and regardless of, of the stock we choose. And there are any number of ways we do it. I, I do that in a proprietary fashion, but one simple way uh, would be to compare the existing reading um, to values prior to that. So you could, for instance, say over the last 100 days, 200 days, 300 days, whatever the case may be, and see where the reading ranks relative to uh, the previous history. And that would be one way to normalize it, but there are obviously other ways, and, and we use quite a different uh, technique. But once I started including and focusing on, on the magnitude of price change, that's really where I started to see um, phenomenal test results. Yeah, I think a common approach with mean reversion is to use a um, a moving average and then measure the distance from that, whether it's volatility based or standard deviation or something like that. So have you found that using uh, techniques like greater change, which kind of measure price against itself, are more effective than uh, things like moving averages and bands? Sure. So, And those are all effective techniques. Absolutely. This is just a technique I developed, liked and saw fantastic results. So yeah, all the testing I've done, I've opted to to run with with rate of change, and 
in my view, I, you know, I guess moving away from a moving average, is, it would likewise um, be measuring magnitude to, to some extent. Um, but for me personally, and the test results we've observed, it's the magnitude of, of the move measured by rate of change that appears to be the most effective. Thanks to PJ for sharing that little bit of insight into where he found the best test results in his mean reversion trading. If you'd like to hear more from PJ on mean reversion, you can grab that chat on episode number 62 or just head over to bettersystemtrader.com slash 62. Now, also as we finish up here, I'd just like to remind you that if you have any mean reversion questions for Cesar, you can still submit those for us to cover in our next chat, but I'm probably going to close that page down uh, tomorrow, I think, so you need to get in quick. Just head on over to bettersystemtrader.com slash 127. Scroll down a little bit and I think it's towards the bottom of the page. You'll see a form there where you can submit your question to Caesar. So that's all for this week's Trading Thought. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the rest of your week. Okay, well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. Come on over to bettersystemtrader.com. That's where you'll find all the previous episodes, all the transcribes, all the show notes, and all the free weekly trading tips. bettersystemtrader.com. Bettersystemtrader.com.